video today, I wanted to go over how you can get location in your iOS app. Uh, we're going to be working in Swift. First and foremost, I apologize for my scratchy voice. I've been a little sick lately, but uh, this video has been requested so many times I figured I'd knock it out for you guys. Um, so yeah, with that being said, let's get started. So let's start up Xcode first and foremost, and we're going to create a new application, um, a single view application. And let's just call it location for sake of simplicity. Um, save it to our desktop. And cool, let's uh, expand this out. Let's also expand this. And let's move this up here, otherwise it's gonna bother me. Let's pick our simulator, pick any simulator for the sake of this example and just run it because we're gonna need it anyways. Um, and let's chat about location once it starts. Cool. So location is handled by a framework that Apple gives us, Core Location, which hooks into the device's GPS. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it used in apps like uh, like dating apps um, to find people near you, navigation, uh, shopping apps to find stuff in your area, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm not going to explain what location is. You already know that, what it is, and what the useful benefits are, that's why you're here. Uh, what I will explain is the nuances with iOS and location. Particularly, um, Apple has gotten, especially over the last few years, more strict about how we can we developers can use it. So you'll need to request permission, as I'm sure you've seen other apps do, uh, and also specify what type of permission you want. So you can actually get the location while the app is um, in use by the user or in the background uh, for things like navigation or um, I know like for example like Facebook uh, loves to use your location to create um, some like ad data on you so uh, they use it in the background so there's things like that so you need to be mindful of that as well as a battery usage um, constraints that different types of GPS usage bring to the user so without me kind of rambling on we're gonna create a label on this um, application and uh, once we get the location which is represented in longitude and latitude by the framework. We're just gonna show the longitude and latitude here. I'm also gonna walk you through how you can actually test the location um, on a simulator and simulate like other locations around the world. So with that being said, um, let's go to our storyboard and let's set the background color of this to, let's do black. And let's add a label and set its text color to white. So we're gonna add a label, put it there. Let's set, whoops, this to white. We're gonna make it centered. We're gonna bump this font up a little bit. Zero lines, AKA unlimited lines. Uh, and what we're also gonna do is take this and expand it a smidge and add some constraints to it. Um, if you're not familiar about constraints, leave a comment below or uh, check out my other videos on this channel, uh, I'd be more than happy to help you out with that. Um, the other thing we're gonna need to do is in our view controller, we're gonna create an outlet for the label. So let's do that real fast. And let's go back to the storyboard and hook up that outlet. So we can open this, right click, and drag from here to the label like so. We have the label linked and we're done in here. So let's go back to our view controller and run the app and you'll just see our black screen with um, that label centered. Cool. So what we wanna do is use um, core location to uh, number one, uh, request permission and then number two, start getting the user's location and number three, with that location, uh, throw it into our label so we can actually see the longitude and latitude. Um, so as you can imagine, we need to first import core location. Uh, what we're gonna be working with is the core location manager, which manages things about location, and it's delegate, which will get uh, called when the location is updated, um, when the authorization of the user permission for location changes, uh, and other events. So we're gonna add here, Whoops, there it is. The core location manager, or CL location manager delegate. Uh, as mentioned, we want the actual manager so we can do, if I can spell manager correctly, 
manager. We want it to be a SIA location manager. And we'll make it optional just so it compiles. Otherwise, um, it's going to yell at us to compile. Uh, what we could actually also do is that. Uh, so we have a manager. When the app loads, uh, when this view controller particularly loads, we're going to set the labels text to ready. And in the view did appear, which basically gets called when this view appears, as you can imagine, we're going to set up this manager. So first and foremost, uh, we're going to say the manager's delegate is self. We're going to say the manager that desired accuracy is CL location accuracy. We're going to use best. So the accuracy uh, will actually as it describes, give you um, an accuracy for the location. So it could be to the 10th meter, it could be to a region, it could be by a couple of miles or kilometers, depending on where you live. So this is important and also be mindful of um, what it does to a user's battery. Uh, but that's what that is. Um, we're gonna say a manager, uh, on the manager we wanna request when in use permission. And actually, we forgot to do one thing, which we'll do in just a second relating to this. And then we want to do manager dot start updating location. Um, as the locations start to come in, we want to get those locations somewhere. So we're going to say there's a location manager uh, delegate function called location manager did update locations. Um, and it has a array of these CL location objects, which hold a coordinate uh, longitude latitude. So we're just gonna say, we're gonna make sure there's at least one in there before we try to put it in our label. So we're gonna say guard let first is locations dot first. And we're gonna say, if it's in there, we're gonna do label dot text equals the coordinates uh, on the first the long the coordinates longitude as well as the latitude um, other than that what we need to do here uh, notice here we said request when in use permission we need to actually go to our info.plist and add a string that the operating system, in this case iOS obviously, will show to the user describing why we need permission to use uh, the location. So in a real application, it might be like, we use your location to find other users by you. Uh, we use your location for navigation features, etc. cetera. Um, and if you don't have the string in here, your app will actually crash. So we're gonna come in here and add a new row. Start typing in privacy with a capital P and I believe it's location when in use tab. And we're going to type in a message or something like, please allow to test this app. Um, cool. So obviously in a real app, make sure you provide a sane sentence here. Uh, Apple does review this and scrutinize this. So if you don't have a descriptive enough sentence, they will reject your app. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's go back to the view controller. This is really all we need to get the user's location. It's very, very simple for the most part, very little code. So let's run it and see what we get. Let's do command R. We will see a pop up or maybe we won't. Interesting. Why don't we see a pop up? Um, let me think. So we have location in here. Um, let's actually assign this down here. So let's make this optional and let's do uh, this equals this. And because this is optional, this all becomes a question mark. Um, and it's still not wanting to pop up, which is mildly annoying. So let me think. So we have ready on here, I believe, right? So the, it's definitely not the label. Um, we've imported core location. We have the core location delegate. Um, let's see. Uh, 
bear with me one second. So the simulator sometimes needs a little nudge in terms of the actual location we're trying to simulate. So actually, haha, here we go. So if we go to debug and location, we can see that it's set to none. Um, so to simulate, let's just select any of these. And actually, look at that. It updated right away. Um, for some reason, I think it's because I've used this device already, the simulator. Um, we didn't get the prompt of please allow location access or whatever, but you would have gotten the prompt. But the simulator actually by default doesn't have a user location. And we need to provide one via this debug menu drop down. So you can actually hit this location and pick any of these. So if we pick a different one, you'll notice it changes. Well, it might not change actually because we're just using the first location in this array that we get. Um, so as you saw, uh, testing location is a little annoying on iOS on the simulator. Um, devices are obviously easier because you can use your own location. Um, but if your demo, if you're following along, uh, is not working, uh, other than leaving a comment, which you're more than welcome to do, and I'll be more than happy to help, uh, check out this debug menu because uh, it's for the simulator, and every simulator is different. So if you set it up for one simulator, then run this on like iPad, for example, and it doesn't work, it's probably because you haven't set up the debug for that. Um, that's about it for this video. Uh, I know it was pretty fast. I apologize again for the voice. I'm a little sick. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a bunch of more iOS videos. Uh, but that being said, thanks for watching. Have a good one.